Mabuhay, I'm RJ. I started using alcohol-based markers for my drawings in college when manual drawing and rendering of architectural plates and works were still a thing. Right now, I know things are much easier using different architectural software and programs. And it's a good thing because we have to keep up with the current technology. Plus, using these programs saves time and material costs in general. Commonly, portrait drawings are drawn using pencils, and that is also how I learned to draw portraits before. But now, using alcohol-based markers as my medium, I will try and practice my coloring and shading skills in this video. To begin with, I also have architectural drawing videos here on my channel as well that you can watch. The drawings I made are buildings here in the Philippines. Most of them are churches and I would appreciate it if you take the time to watch them as well. I will put the links in the description box below. Before starting to draw a portrait, I sketch out my composition lightly using a pencil to plan the placement of everything. Sometimes I also put light lines to remind me of where the shadows and highlights are in the drawing. Then, using my kneaded eraser, I slightly erase the majority of my initial sketch just to give me a cleaner canvas to start on. Once done, I will then start with a lighter shade to act as a base for everything, like for the skin, the hair, and the clothing. I will then slowly intensify contrast and shadows by using darker shades as it makes my composition look more cohesive and balanced. I believe it's easier to add colors and intensify later on, rather than to erase once it's already full on heavy color. That's why it's really important to take time to do it like slowly but surely. I would usually use my fine liner pens, ball pens, and charcoal pencils alongside my alcohol-based markers. And just like any art medium, using markers takes practice and exercise. It takes a lot of practice and honestly, I'm still practicing especially with controlling the pressure and angle of my hand to achieve my desired line thickness or even with the colors. But since I have shaky hands, sometimes I have a hard time doing it. So what I do is I try to vary the pressure in holding the marker to achieve different line thicknesses and opacities. There are a lot of cheaper marker brand options already that give the same output as the more expensive ones. Expensive markers often use high-quality ink formulations that offer rich, vibrant colors with excellent coverage and saturation that last a long time. But there are also benefits to using cheaper markers, especially for beginners or those on a tight budget making them accessible to artists of all skill levels, including students, hobbyists, and those just starting, as it allows every user to experiment with different colors and techniques without breaking the bank. Ultimately, the decision to invest in expensive markers will depend on the available budget, artistic goals, and personal preferences. To be honest with you, there are times when I don't quite like my outputs. It may be about the symmetry, the composition, or I don't know, sometimes I'm just not in the mood. And every time that happens, it frustrates me. But it's okay. I just constantly remind myself that there's always a next time to try again. As long as I am consistent, committed, and dedicated, I can always try again. And you can always try again too. I believe improvement takes time and dedication, and it's important to be patient and embrace the learning process and the progress we make along the way.
If you enjoyed this video and you have any questions or maybe suggestions for anything you'd like me to cover in my future videos, please leave a comment and subscribe to see more of my content. Also, don't forget to connect with me on my social channels listed in the description box below. Remember to keep practicing your skills. Experiment with different tools. Have fun and let your creativity flow, just like what I did today. Until next time, maraming salamat po.